dear students welcome to my channel dr v r pudli professor of management and economics in this video i am dealing with second case study on computation of working capital requirement computation of working capital requirement case study 2 let us now read out the given case study the board of directors of xyz engineering company limited requests you to prepare a statement showing the working capital requirements for a level of activity of 156000 units of production following information is available for your calculation a table with two columns consisting of particulars amount per unit is given in which estimated cost per unit of production is given raw material per unit cost is rupees 90 direct labor per unit cost is rupees 40 overheads per unit cost is rupees 75 total cash cost coming to 205 rupees selling price is determined as rupees 250 gst 18% determined as 45 rupees invoice price to debtors is rupees 295 additional information given in the case study raw materials are in stock on average for one month materials are in process 50% complete stays on average four weeks finished goods are in stock on average for one month credit allowed by suppliers is one month time lag in payment from debtors is two months average lag in payment of wages is 1.5 weeks average lag in payment of overheads is 1 month average lag in payment of gst is 1 month 20% of output is sold against cash desired minimum cash in hand and that bank is rupees 60000 it is assumed that production is carried out evenly throughout the year and wages and overheads accrue similarly and a time period of 4 weeks is equivalent to 1 month dear students let us now compute working capital required for the company based upon the information given in solution i have used three steps in computing working capital requirement step number 1 estimation of current assets step number 2 estimation of current liabilities and step number 3 determination of net working capital required let us deal with the first step that is estimation of current assets we all know that major current assets are cash inventories and debtors minimum desired cash in hand and at bank is given as 60000 in case study that was shown against minimum desired cash in hand and at bank second component of current asset is inventories inventories consists of raw materials work in progress finished goods stock the investment amount in raw materials is determined by multiplying level of activity of 156000 with per unit cost of raw material that is 90 and since 
raw materials are in stock for one month, we multiplied the value with 1 by 12. We derived raw material amount as 11,70,000. The amount of work in progress is determined by multiplying 1,56,000 units with 205, 1 by 12 and 50 by 100. We multiplied 1,56,000 with 205 as 205 is the cost of the good. We multiplied this value with 1 by 12 because work in progress is expected to be in stock for one month. And we multiplied this value with 50 by 100 as there is an assumption that work in progress is assumed to be 50% completion stage. Thus, we decided work in progress amount by multiplying 1,56,000 with 205, 1 by 12 and 50 by 100 and finally we got the value of 13,32,500. The amount to be invested in finished goods stock is determined by multiplying 1,56,000 with 205 and 1 by 12 as finished goods are expected to be in stock for one month. The amount to be invested in finished goods stock is determined as 26,65,000. The amount to be invested in debtors is determined by multiplying 1,24,800 with selling price 250 and accounts receivable period 2 by 12. Here, 20% of output is sold against cash, hence we have taken credit sale level as 1,24,800. Thus, we got the debtor's amount of 52 lakhs. After adding all current assets value, we derived total current assets value as 1 crore 4 lakhs 27,500. The second step in computation of working capital requirement is estimation of current liabilities. Credit allowed by suppliers for one month, hence we multiplied 1,56,000 with 90 and 1 by 12, we got the value of 11,70,000. Lag in payment of wages is 1.5 weeks, which is equivalent to 0.375 months, hence we multiplied 1,56,000 with the 40 per unit cost of waste and with 0 0.375 by 12 and we got the value of 1,95,000. Lag in payment of overheads is determined by multiplying 1,56,000 with 75 and 1 by 12 and the final amount is determined as 9,75,000. Lag in payment of GST is determined by multiplying 1,56,000 with 45 and 1 by 12 and the final amount is determined as 5,85,000. By adding all these current liabilities, total current liabilities amount is determined as 29 lakhs 25,000. Step number three, determination of networking capital. Networking capital is equal to total current assets minus total current liabilities. Here, the total current assets are rupees 1 crore 4 lakhs 27,500 minus total current liabilities 29 lakhs 25,000. Therefore, we got the networking capital amount of 75 lakhs 2500. I had given working notes of the case study. One, in valuing work in progress, since 50% completion stage is given, 
we multiplied with 50 by 100. 2. Credit sales is equal to 1,56,000 into 80% that is equal to 1,24,800 as 20% of output is sold against cash. 3. Debtors is equal to 205 plus 18% GST of 250 rupees that is 45. 45 is added to 205 and finally we got the value of 250 rupees. 4. 4 weeks is equal to 1 month. Hence 1.5 weeks is equal to 1.5 by 4 that is equal to 0 0.375 months. Dear students, in this video I had dealt with case study number 2 of computation of working capital requirement. Thank you.